Welcome to Hemfold Area High School. My name is Dr. David Palmer and I serve as the building principal. I would like to thank the, our staff, students, administration, and school board directors. Would like to thank all of you for visiting us today, especially Governor Shapiro to speak with our students regarding a very serious topic that is important to every school in the Commonwealth. And that topic would be mental health. We have seen an increased need for mental health services over the past several years, and we are always looking for ways to assist our students in this area. We have a passionate student body who are aware of this growing concern and want to do everything they can to help. I would like to introduce one of our student leaders who shares this concern for increased mass treasurer and also a member of our peer mediation team. You got this now. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Nick Miller, and I am a junior here at Hemfield Area High School. I am involved in student council and peer mediation, and through these, I gain perspective of students and have the opportunity to talk to them about important things, like our mental health, which for my peers and I needs to become a priority because we are in a crisis. As a 17-year-old high school student who has personally experienced struggles with mental health and has seen so many others experience them, I say with urgency that the mental health crisis in American teens needs to risk behavior survey showed that 42% of high school students experience persistent feelings of sadness or hopelessness, and 22% seriously considered attempting suicide. Girls and LGBTQ plus students were even more likely to experience poor mental health and these statistics are only getting worse. While expanded budgets and money are necessary to address this crisis, there are other things that need to be changed. The American Academy of Pediatric, Pediatrics recommends both middle schools and high schools starting at 8.30 a.m. or later in order for teens to get a sufficient amount of sleep to improve their mental health and well-being. In the future, I hope to see not only Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania politicians push for later start times and zero in his administration because they are aware of this crisis and want to continue educating themselves and others and reach out to teenagers to create solutions. It is my honor to introduce and welcome our 48th governor of Pennsylvania, Governor Shapiro. Thank you, Nick. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Nick. And I am so impressed by you and your fellow students. Uh, Y'all gave me a lot to think about today and a lot of work to do as I go back uh, to our state capitol. And I want to thank everyone for being here today. It is really a privilege to be here at Hemfield Area High School. I want to thank uh, Dr. Tammy Willicki and Principal Palmer um, and Mrs. Reese, who was part of our conversation in the other room, our counselor here station with me about the mental health challenges facing young people all across this commonwealth and to talk honestly and openly about what we can do together to give people like me a roadmap on the kind of work we need to do to make sure students' lives are better. Um, helping me in that work are two elected leaders who are here with us today, and I want to thank Representative Nelson uh, for joining us today and Commissioner Chen for joining us today. They have important voices in this process. And um, I spoke to Senator Ward before, and she couldn't be here, but sends her regards. I think what's clear from the conversation that I had with this group of students and others across Pennsylvania is that they're asking for our help. In fact, many of them are killed, but in every school and every county across Pennsylvania. I think for too long, and we talked about this, there's been a stigma associated with mental health and getting help for mental health challenges. But what's um, exciting for me and what's uplifting for me is that with this generation, that stigma is starting to dissipate. Young people are showing the adults the way. And young people all across this commonwealth are not afraid to talk about their mental health. And for them to be able to bravely sit before the governor of the commonwealth of Pennsylvania and share their stories with me, share the stories of their friends with me, um, should make them feel empowered. Students that I spoke to today, 
especially students like Nick, um, who had the opportunity to share with me several of his ideas and um, his big thoughts on how to promote change across this commonwealth. I'll give you one example, um, and I gave Nick a little bit of homework. I hope that's okay, uh, Principal Palmer. Nick spoke about mental health challenges that a lot of young people are facing, and one of the things that he believes contributes to that is a lack of sleep. And I think most professionals would agree that sleep is an important part of being healthy. Nick's done a lot of research on potentially moving the start time of school back a bit so that students can have more opportunity for sleep. And so I asked Nick if he would share with me his reason we want to consider um, in the legislature and, and in the governor's office about making changes to our state law. I don't know if we'll make that change, Nick, but we're certainly going to have the conversation as a result of you raising that, that issue with us here today. And there have been students like Nick all across Pennsylvania who have raised lots of issues with us. In fact, we're one of the only states in the nation that have student-driven data that is showing us the mental health challenges that we face here in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Let me put a little more meat on that bone. Well, prior to serving as governor, I served as the Attorney General of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. And as AG, we started something called Safe to Say. It's an anonymous tip report when used it. This program's been in effect for about five years. And during that time, Pennsylvanians received over 100,000 tips to Safe to Say. While this was initially set up as a way for students to be able to report potential acts of violence, if God forbid a student brought a gun or some other weapon to school, the reality is it's being used for something quite different. Over 75% of those over 100,000 tips have been about mental health issues, suicide ideation, self-harm, students reaching out for help for themselves and others. And that should tell us all we need to know about the fact that students need more assistance here in their data that we have collected over time is demonstrating um, the growing need here in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Consider this. Uh, over the last decade, the symptoms of depression in young people across the country increased by 40 percent. And here in Pennsylvania, over 40 percent of students reported symptoms of depression back in 2021. Right here in Westmoreland County, 38 percent of our students reported to the Pennsylvania Commission on Crime and Delinquency that they feel depressed. 38 percent right here in Westmoreland County. 17 percent reported incidents of self-harm. 18 percent seriously considered to deliver for them. Parents know it, and I'm the proud father of four children. I see it as a parent. Teachers understand it as well. I heard it from Miss Reese here. She understands it. And that is why uh, we have tried to step up and help this school and this community and why we need to do more for schools and communities all across Pennsylvania. Early on during my tenure as governor, we sent $365,000 in a grant from my administration to this school to use for mental health training. For a third year in a row, the Pennsylvania School Boards Association has identified student mental health as one of the top challenges that schools face, physically and mentally. And it's time we just listen to our young people who are showing us the way. You know, back on the campaign trail, I promised that I would put student mental health front and center here in the Commonwealth. And I've reiterated that call over and over again now as governor, including in my budget address just over two months ago. And now we're ready to deliver on that promise. And here's my prescription. We need to prioritize mental health in words and in deeds. My budget would invest over half a billion dollars in student mental health for the next five years. That's a serious down payment on the needs for our students. 
schools will then be able to use this money field exactly what they need to do but Hempfield would have the opportunity to draw down these funds and customize the programs that they see fit for their students for some that's going to mean hiring more on-site counselors like Mrs. Reese for others it may mean partnering with behavioral health providers to offer the students services they need to best meet their needs also something that's happening here at Hempfield one of the students talk to me about that I believe that schools know their students best and that this investment will give the school districts the tools they need to make student mental health a priority I think it's also important to note and several of the students pointed this out today mental health affects our students both in when students need that help they can get it whether they're in the classroom or in the school building or whether they're on summer break that's why my budget also increases county mental health funding by $20 million this year. Your commissioner knows how important this issue is because it's something that CCAP, the County Commission Association of Pennsylvania, has been calling for. This investment would provide $60 million to our counties per year to fully restore the funding that was cut from them previously that they can then dedicate to mental health services. Since the county funds so much of the mental health services, it's important that we make sure they have the resources they need. Funding these counties providers of both parties have been calling for this for some time. I think it's also important to note that when a parent or someone goes to schedule an appointment for their children, they should know that the health insurance they pay for will actually cover those appointments will actually cover those counseling services. Here in Pennsylvania, we have something called a mental health parity law. That means that our insurance companies are required to pay for mental health care just as they pay for physical health care. So if you break your leg and get a cast and your insurance covers that, your insurance would also need to cover the counseling services for your mental health needs. But too often times, insurance companies skirt the rules and don't actually pay for the counseling. That's why to make mental health parity a priority and hold insurers accountable so that the mental health benefits that they are required to provide are covered. Since I took office four months ago, the Pennsylvania Insurance Department has helped more than 60,000 Pennsylvanians get almost six million dollars back from insurance companies that violated their parity laws six million dollars back to the in the pockets of those who pay for insurance because those parity laws have been violated and let me be clear we are not done commissioner humphreys and his team are continuing their efforts to hold insurance companies accountable and ensure that mental health care is covered Pennsylvanians help on this so hear me if you were asked to pay a higher copay, for example, for mental health services than you normally would for physical health care services, we want to hear from you. If you have, uh, if you have to ask your insurance company for permission to see a mental health care provider, we want to know about that. If you feel like there was an extra barrier put up by the insurance companies that usually isn't there when you go to your doctor for some physical health care please let us know that right away you can contact the Pennsylvania Insurance Department in a special hotline we've set up at 877-881-6388 or go to insurance.pa.gov hold these insurance companies accountable and ensure that our students and others are able to get access to the care that they deserve and that they've paid for look our administration is committed to making sure mental health is a priority. We're committed to working Democrats and Republicans alike to passing a budget that invests in making sure our students have what they need. Our students are crying out for help and it is up to us to deliver for them. And so that is why I reiterate my call to the lawmakers of both parties to say, let's prioritize our kids and let's get this done. Let's make these investments and ensure that we have healthy, safe communities 
for all of these students. And the best way we can do that for that cuts taxes, doesn't raise them, but still allows us to make these critical investments in our young people. With that, um, Nick would be happy to answer all your questions and um, <laughs> we'll go from there. Fire away. Governor, how important is it to have these sit down meetings with these students to find out what exactly they're going through? Look, it's, it's critical for me um, to listen to these students, to learn from them. That allows me to, to do my job better as governor, to take the insights I got from them back to Harrisburg and then work on that with our lawmakers and others to try and get these things done. You know, it's one thing for us to read a paper. Uh, it's one thing for us to hear experts testify before going through every day. That allows me to more effectively do my job for them. That's why I do my best to get out of the state capitol as much as I can and listen to people in communities and then put forth a budget and bills and other things that are actually going to make their lives better. My budget's focused on common sense solutions to the pressing problems of today, and these students really reaffirm that today that we've got to address mental health. Governor, you bring up When we have conversations about mental health in the state capitol, I think a lot of times the adults are afraid to speak up and talk about it in their communities. Um, when I come and visit with students like the, those students here at Hempfield today, they're not afraid to speak up, to speak up both about their own personal experiences as well as what they're seeing with, with their fellow students. They care deeply about their students and they wanna be a part of helping address their needs. They have an incredible peer-to-peer -peer program here, which, you know, Mr. Principal, you should be really proud of. Many of the students here participate in that. That's an example of where students want to help their fellow students tackle these big challenges. And by the way, I asked one of the students who leads the peer-to-peer -peer thing to send us a memo on how they do that and see if we can stand that up in other districts across Pennsylvania. That's not something the school district. So for me, I think what's most striking is just how open they are about mental health, whereas the adults tend to be much more closed about having those kinds of conversations. Governor, you mentioned that um, the funds that you set aside in your budget are set aside for mental health. Yeah. Um, do you believe that those may help assist schools um, make up for the funds that were existing during the pandemic that might have been set aside for mental health programs that needed additional help That'll be a question for the superintendent and other leaders of schools. What, what I'm trying to do with the way I've proposed this funding is not dictate to Hemfield, here's exactly the kind of counselor you need to hire and here's exactly how you have to use the money, but rather a full-time counselor. For others, it's going to be contracting with outside agencies. For others, it may be online tools that are available for telemental health. We want schools to be able to craft their own plans but then have the resources that they can draw down. Importantly, this is not a one-time investment. If you look at my budget proposal, it's over $100 million a year for schools each year for the next five years. So schools don't have to worry if they, for example, the principal determines they want to hire a full-time person. They don't have to worry that they'll lose the funding the next year. So it's going to be funding available on an ongoing basis. This is something that has attracted broad bipartisan support. I've heard from Republican and Democratic from their local school districts. And to have the school districts be able to craft the plans as opposed to state officials, I think most people think makes the most sense. Other questions? I'm happy to come to you in a sec. Anybody else on this topic? Okay, you're up. Go okay, ahead. Um, just a couple questions. One, um, can you comment about the Allegheny County um, executor, exec, um, executive deputy, uh, race, Sarah sure. and Marana, and Marana, I'm sorry, that's your name. Yeah. Uh, do you have any comment about that? Sure. Where'd you get the the quarter zip, man? Did you go shopping here? My voice went here. Oh, okay. <laughs> His voice is. 
That's right. Yeah, you both have. Um, look, uh, you know, I've had had the good fortune to work with Sarah. Uh, she's been a terrific state representative. Um, she listens to her constituents with her head and her heart, uh, and she's going to do a great, great job, I believe, as county executive. I'm going to look forward to partnering with her as I've partnered with County Executive Fitzgerald and with county commissioners and county leaders all across Pennsylvania. Uh, I look forward to doing whatever she needs to make sure uh, she gets through November, which I'm confident she will, and then most importantly, work together to fight for the good people of Allegheny County. And a follow-up, if I may, um, about, can you comment about the maintaining of the House, the Democrats maintaining the House? Yeah. What does that mean for your government in Pennsylvania? Representative knows this. Um, we're the only state in the nation with a um, Democratic-led House and a Republican-led Senate. And I think, um, actually, that system works pretty well. It forces us to work together. It forces us to um, focus on common sense solutions to the pressing problems of today. Mental health is a great example of that. And last night, there was a race to kind of decide the balance of the House. There had been a couple of resignations. There were a couple of special elections last night. And the Democrats maintained control of the House. And of course, the Republicans still maintain control of the Senate. And so I'll expect that we're going to continue to work together in a bipartisan manner on common sense solutions. As for that here in the Commonwealth, and whether or not women were still going to be able to make decisions over their own bodies, whether people's um, choices were going to be respected here in this Commonwealth, whether real freedom would prevail. It's something I ran on as governor, and you all know how that race turned out. And there was a similar result in Delaware County last night. So I was pleased to see Heather Boyd win. I'm pleased that we're going to continue to work together as Democrats and Republicans to advance the cause of real freedom and common sense solutions here in Pennsylvania. Um, I've had a, a terrific working relationship with your state senator, Kim Ward, who leads the um, Republican caucus in the Senate, as well as Joanna McClinton, the Democrat who leads the Democratic House um, in, uh, in, in Harrisburg, as well as we're all working together. We're all making sure that we're putting Pennsylvanians first. And while we may have some differences on specific issues, uh, I think we're rowing in the same direction. And Harrisburg seems to be working again after a lot of years of dysfunction. And I'm really pleased to see that. Anything else? Thank you. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.